Hey guys, Seth with Skynet Drone Systems. Welcome back to the channel. In part one of this series, we showed you how to install ATAC along with the UAS plugin. I'm going to link that video in the description below. In today's video, part two, I'm going to show you how to set up a live stream that you can use to broadcast video inside ATAC with the UAS plugin. You're going to be able to live stream video directly to any device on your server. This is going to work on Android, iOS devices, and with WinTAC on any Mac or Windows operating system. You're also going to be able to view the live video feed from the aircraft directly on the map to give you the best possible situational awareness. So stay tuned. The first thing we're gonna do is choose a streaming platform. I like to use Wowza because it allows you to pay as you use the service and avoid any monthly subscription fees. And they have fantastic customer service. For this tutorial, we're going to be using their free trial. So you're going to activate your free trial and then you're going to click add live stream. Then we're going to name our live stream. I'm going to use the name of the aircraft it's going to be streaming from. Then we're going to select the closest location to where we're going to be broadcasting from. We're going to click on next and now we're going to set up the encoder we want to use to connect to Wowza video. We're going to choose SRT. However, you can choose RTSP, RTMP, or any of the others listed below. It's going to function the same way. We're going to select SRT for our encoder. And then we're going to leave adaptive bitrate pass through alone. And then we're going to change our input resolution to match whatever's coming from the aircraft. We're going to click Save to Asset Management. Click Next. And on the next two screens, we're not going to change anything. Primarily, it's just to do with the aesthetics of your stream, whether you want a host image displayed or a logo displayed during the corner of your live stream. So we're going to leave that alone and click next. On this page, we're going to go up. We're going to do the same thing here, except at the bottom, we're going to uncheck display sharing icons on the hosted page and then click next. Now that the stream is completely set up, we're just going to go over all of the details and make sure that we're happy with everything. If we are, we're just going to scroll to the bottom and then click finish. On the next screen, we're going to scroll down and until we start our live stream, we're not going to get the server information that we need. Once we start the live stream, you're going to see an IP address at the end of that data set. So we're gonna scroll up and click start live stream once the live stream is started, we're going to scroll down and get our stream info. At the end of our primary server ID, you're going to see that IP address inside parentheses. That's what we're looking for to input into ATAC. You're also going to need the host port underneath as well as the HLS playback URL. That's what you're going to enter into any device in order to view the feed directly from the aircraft. If you chose an encoder with security features enabled, once you start the stream, it's going to generate all of the pertinent information for you to enter into ATAC. So now we're going to go to the RC Pro. We're going to open up ATAC. We're going to click on the drop down menu, scroll down to the UAS tool, and then we're going to open ATAC Go V5. We're going to log in and then click return to UAS tool. Then we're going to click the drop down menu again, scroll down to settings. Then we're going to click video broadcast preferences. Then we're going to select video broadcast destination, check SRT. Then we're going to scroll down until we see video destination host. We're going to click on that, but we're not going to enter anything. The endpoint is going to change for the pilot every time he launches or starts the stream. Nothing else will change. However, when you launch the stream as the pilot, you are going to have to enter the IP address every time. We're going to select destination port and then enter our port number. Since we didn't select any security authentication, the stream ID will be blank and the passphrase will be blank as well. We're going to select video observer ID and then we're going to enter the playback URL HLS at the bottom of your stream page. Now we're going to enter the playback URL HLS into our devices. We're going to start with iOS. We're going to go into ATAC and then click the video icon on the bottom left. That's going to open a menu. We're going to click the plus icon, then create new. 
in the alias tab this is going to be the call sign of the uav and then we're going to enter the playback url hls moving over to the android device we're going to open up our drop down menu scroll down to video then we're going to scroll up to the plus icon select that then we're going to enter what type of stream that it's going to be receiving in this case it's going to be https and then we're going to add the alias name or the uav call sign then in the field above we're going to copy and paste our playback url hls and we're going to delete the https colon in both backslashes if you're looking to live stream from any aircraft that is not directly supported by the ATAC UAS tool, you can still live stream into ATAC. I'm going to show you how to do that here. You're going to open your flight software, and then you're going to enter the camera view of the aircraft. You're going to bring up your settings, and then you're going to find transmission. You're going to select live streaming platforms, click the RTMP icon, for the address, we're going to go back into Wowza. We're going to take the first part of the primary server minus the IP address and the stream name. We're going to put a backslash in between those two addresses to give us our RTMP address. So it's going to be primary server backslash stream name. Now we're going to take our playback URL, copy that, open our video section in ATAC. Click the plus icon to add a new video stream. Select HTTPS. Now we're going to paste our playback URL without the HTTPS encoder because we've added it in the tab above. Then scroll down and click add. Now that all the setups are complete, we're going to turn on our personal hotspot and then we're going to connect the devices. Now that we're connected to the hotspot, we're going to sign in to Wowza Video and then start our live stream. Now that the stream has started, we're going to scroll down to where it says primary server and then we're going to copy the numbers inside the parentheses. Now we're going to log into ATAC. Scroll down to the UAS tool. We're going to log in to DJI Go or DJI Go V5. Click return to the UAS tool. Then we're going to scroll down to settings. Video broadcast preferences. Then we're going to scroll down to destination host and we're going to paste the IP address out of the primary server from our stream. Click confirm. Then select that as the new endpoint. In the next pop-up, do not update the Video Observer URL. Make sure you click no. Then we're going to exit back to the main screen. Click the play icon and you're going to be able to view the live stream from the aircraft. Now you're going to scroll down to the wrench icon on the bottom right and then over to the play icon on the top left. You're going to click that to start the broadcast. Before we launch the aircraft or try to connect to any devices, we're going to reopen Wowza and check to make sure that we're live streaming. Now that we've confirmed our stream is active, we're going to open our iOS device, click the video tab. Then all we have to do is click the play button next to the UAV that we added. Once we confirm the stream is working in the iOS device, we're going to switch over to the Android device and do the same thing. We're going to scroll down until we find the video icon tab. We're going to select that. Then we're just going to click play on the UAV that we added. Now that we've made sure all of our systems are up and running, we're going to go back into DJI Go V5 and we're going to launch the aircraft. To launch the UAV, you're going to push both control sticks to the inner or outer lower corners. Then you're going to launch the aircraft and click return to UAS tool. The last thing we're going to do is select video overlays and then video on map. This is going to display the video feed from the aircraft directly on whatever maps that you're using.
So that's it guys, if you follow those steps, you're going to be able to set up your live stream and allow anyone on your server to be able to view the feed directly from the aircraft. Stay tuned for next week's video where we cover how to install WinTAC on any operating system to use as a GCU or ground control unit. Make sure you guys hit the like, hit the subscribe, and as always, stay safe out there and we'll see you guys really soon. Copy that.